Hello, 3Designers. I'm Josh with St. John, 3Design NYC on the forum, and this is the video demonstration series. We've had so many requests to cover the 3Shaper, our new Surface Subdivision module for 3Design CAD, and I'm happy to report that this is the 3Shaper special. This is a two-part, 90-minute look at the 3Shaper, starting at the most basic tool-by-tool -tool user interface questions and moving all the way through complete constructions. We're going to look at what shapes can be imported and how to work on them. I'm not going to waste any time and I'm going to hop right in. Okay, so once we are into the 3Design workspace, um, I'm going to point out the 3Shaper module is under Toolkit. It's the fourth icon over. If you don't have this icon, it's because 3Design's 3Shaper is not activated on your license. There could be a couple of reasons for this, but just get in touch with your territory manager and they'll be able to help you out. So the first thing that I want to do is just open up the 3Shaper and we'll just look at some of the tool sets. We'll just go through and explain tool by tool by tool what they all do. So I'm just going to activate the 3Shaper by clicking on the modeling icon and you see the top changes to surface subdivisions and my tools all change. Now I'm going to hide the axes and planes just so you guys can see what's going on here and I'm going to start off in the creation tool section at the bottom and just bring in a basic box and change it back to the select icon. So now I said I was going to choose a box and the tool says box, so why do we have a sphere in the center of the screen? This brings us to the first part of the three shaper. The upper left hand corner we have different views, okay? And these correspond very nicely with these different selection modes that we can uh, work with. So let's call this first view is actual view. So if I was to leave the three shaper now, you would see I get a shape that's very similar to the way it's viewed in the actual view mode. The second is polygonal view. And this shows me a box in the way that we would think of a box with six different faces. But if I leave the main three shaper, I still get the same shape. So we have actual view, polygonal view, and this top one is we're going to call transparent view. However, it doesn't seem to be very transparent to us now we have to pop over to the right hand side in order to activate the transparency. So right now I'm going to go back to actual view and you can see I can choose any of the faces of this object. This is face selection. The second one is edge selection. With edge selection I can choose any of the edges. If I go to polygonal view you see it corresponds with the edges of each of these faces. And lastly, we have vertices. And vertices are the points that these edges connect. Now, under transparent view, if I turn it on now, you're going to see that the vertices behind the object are visible in transparent view. So transparent view is um, useful to us when we're working with more complex objects and we want to be able to manipulate points that are either inside or behind the view that we're working on. So just to recap, we have actual view, we have polygonal view, and we have transparent view. And we have vertices, we have edges, and we have faces, or surfaces. You're going to be switching back and forth through all of these different modes all the time when you're using the three shaper. So you've got to get really comfortable with understanding what they are and knowing, for instance, that when you're in polygonal view, this is not the way your object looks. This just makes it easier to access, let's say, edges, etc. And this will become more clear as we get into more advanced examples. So let's look at the main tool sets. Of course, we have the exit subdivision tool, much like the sketch where we can exit sub D. Then we have the rest of the selection tools. Let's look at edge ring. This is an edge. If I choose edge ring, look what happens. All four of the edge rings are selected. Let's try it again this way. Again, all four of the edge rings are selected.
So edgering is a quick way to select all of the edge rings. However, you have to have a good subdivision scheme in order for this tool to work. Since we're working on a basic box, it has a good subdivision scheme. If I choose it in this direction, I'm going to get those edge rings. If I choose it in the other direction, I will get those edge rings. And lastly, this direction, I would get these edge rings. The next selection tool is edge loop. So let's try this. In this case, it doesn't work. So I'm going to skip forward and use the edge ring tool. And I'm going to do one subdivision. I'm going to go back and cover this in a bit. I'm just going to use this split and pull tool and validate. And this gives me a new subdivision here. So now if I choose the edge ring edge loop tool, it's going to choose all the way around. So that's the edge loop tool. Also, control Z is undo. And in 3Shaper, you're going to use it all the time. It even undoes your last selection. So now I'm back at the cube. But hopefully you understand the edge loop tool, and we will cover it more later. Select all, pretty self-explanatory. This works in faces or in vertice. However, the edge tools, edge ring and edge loop, only work in edge mode. This tool that looks like a yin-yang is invert. So I have one edge selected. If I invert, it's going to choose all the other edges. Again, this works in all selection modes. The next tool is called borders. Right now, I'm dealing with a solid, an enclosed volume. So if I choose borders, I I'm not going to have any selection. So I'm going to take one face and get rid of it, and now go back to my edges. And you see, I now have green edges. Green edges are open edges. If I choose one of them and choose borders, it's going to select all of the borders. So this only works on green edges. I'm going to undo that, bring my face back by hitting Control Z, and that's borders. The next tool is sharp edges. Right now, all of our edges are yellow. And yellow edges are soft edges, or like filleted edges almost, rounded edges. However, if I choose all my edges and I make them into sharp edges, they're all red. So now actual mode looks very much like polygonal mode because all these edges are hard. If I choose this tool, sharp edge, it's going to select all of the sharp edges at once, allowing me to soften them. I'll do that one more time. So you can see, those are hard edges and soft edges. I'm going to cover the modification tools next, but in order to show how some of these selection tools work, I need to go back and forth into the modification tools. So I'm making another sphere, and this next tool is called Select Subobjects. I'm going to use this on face mode. These are not joined together. These are two distinct objects. If I select one face and then choose Select Subobjects, it's going to choose that entire subobject, and vice versa. And this tool also works only in face mode or surface mode. The next tool is zoom to selection. Pretty self-explanatory. OK, so for the time being, those are the selection tools I'm going to cover. And I'm going to skip the addition tools and move down to the modification tools. Now, modification tools, we've used one, select. And that allows you to select either the faces, the edges, or the vertice. I also briefly mentioned the marquee selection. This works in both directions. And you can box select what you're after. So let's say if we're in vertice mode and we select those four, all four get selected. Now let's look at edges. For edges, if I wanted to get the top two, this one and this one, I have to select like that. You have to select the entire edge in order for it to be selected. So if I wanted to get the whole object, I would select like so. Now comes the fun part. Let's take these four edges, and we'll use the Move tool. And we can move up and down. And if you notice, we do get a readout of the distance we're moving. So this is 2 millimeter right there, etc. Now I'm going to switch to face mode. Choose this. Same effect. And vertice, if I choose all four, 
same effect. And I can move that way, that way, and again, Control Z undoes. Now, if you look at my properties, I have some different options. I don't have to validate, but I could do some different uh, reference access systems. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. For the time being, let's just stay at global access system. And if you want to look at what that is, we'll show all of our axes, like so. And our, our move widget flows along these axes. All right, so some of these tools should be familiar. The icons should look like icons in the solid module and in this 